Okay, good morning everybody. We are in Manhattan, Kansas, and we are at the Midwest Dream Car Collection. We're going to be doing a little video this morning. They just now opened, I believe, so we're going to be going inside. I just thought I'd show you um, the outside of the building. I know it's backward, but it's Midwest Dream Car Collection. I've been getting this on my Facebook page and we finally made it up here to check this out. So as soon as we get inside and get things situated, we will be right back. So just hang on and we'll be in there momentarily. Okay, we're inside. Got our mission paid. There again. We are in Manhattan, Kansas at the Midwest Dream Car Collection Museum. And I'm going to do just a little video here of the, they have 60 vehicles on display and then they have some you can actually get inside and we may do that later. Here's two that setting just inside the lobby. When you first get here, see there's our logo, Midwest Dream Car Collection logo. In this, in this, so, in this real, so cool. This is so cool. It's plus four drop head, 1961 Morgan, plus four drop head coupe. That's what that is. I will admit that I do not know what a lot of these cars are. They're just, some of them are just really unique, like this particular car here. And then here's another one. Like I said, this is right inside the lobby. This is a 1952 classic Roadster. Okay, let's. These are just really, just immaculate. I mean, just immaculate. I'll go here and kind of give you a look at the dash. Um, there's only so close you can get to these, of course. Um, there are four cars in here that you can actually get inside, and I may do that here in a minute. But now we're going to go actually. You can get, we're going to get started here. Model A hot rod. A little peak of the engine. And again, some of these are roped off. You can only get so close, which is understandable. Look at that wood grain steering wheel and shifter. Look at that upholstery. It's really nice. going to go on. That was really nice. Okay. Now here's a unique vehicle here. Let's see what this is. It's available for purchase. It says, you may not be able to see it. But this is actually available for purchase. This is the one that you can actually get inside. We're just going to take a little look at the uh, the way you drive the, this this thing. Huh. Okay. And it does look like that uh, that canvas top can be removed. This would probably be nice for. Oh, look, they've got a clear top on part of the canvas. This would be nice for exhibits, outdoor type exhibits or tours. This would really be nice. Um, for those of you wondering, there again, this is in Manhattan, Kansas at 3007 Anderson Avenue in Manhattan, Kansas. It's in a little uh, strip mall type of an area.
it was really, really foggy on the way up here this morning. We finally drove out of it. Now, I was going to say this was an El Camino. But this is actually not an El Camino. 1972 GMC Sprint. Okay. I'm going to walk around here. And see how the wheels match the paint job. GMC Sprint, really very nice. It's got the Landau roof. The back of it's all. Oh, that just really, really, really nice. These are a very large vehicle. I mean, it, they just don't make them like this anymore, of course. But this is actually one of the ones that you that are, that you can get in. I may not do that, but that is um, an option if I might do that later. Okay. Now here you go. Here's a tin Lizzie. <laughs> wow. Look at that. 1923 Ford Model T runabout. And there again, this is one of the ones that you can actually get in. And we might do that later. Look at that engine. It's really nice. Okay, we're just going to pan around here. And I'm going to show you there. Here's another one. Now, of course, this is a Dodge. And again, this is one of the ones that they'll let you get inside. <laughs> it's probably the closest I'll ever come to owning uh, any uh, cars like this. Speed Demon 2018 Dodge Challenger SRT Demon is the name of this particular vehicle. I'm going to show you the front of it here. These are very powerful vehicles, needless to say. And you know, vehicles like this are usually, insurance is usually uh, a lot more on these because they're considered a sports car. Now we're going to kind of just pan around and show you again. We're going to go on, but, and I'll probably set in one of these here eventually. But this is kind of like the outer part of the museum. Like I said earlier, there's 60 cars on display. They've got other things that goes on here, I guess. Um, but they have a lounge area. I've got to show you this lounge area. It's got some older signs. Maybe there's a mobile gas sign. There's a old Coca-Cola sign, a Sinclair gasoline sign. And then up here, there's, of course, there's Ford. A used parts sign. I don't know how good these are going to show up on the video. Used cars, and there's a super. Let me see if I can get a little bit closer to these and just kind of show you. Yeah, I think you could make that out. Then here's a super Chevrolet service sign. And then they have a. Um, I guess it's get soft drinks and stuff. Oh, that's beer. Oh, okay. This is all beer and uh, hard cider and that sort of thing. So, okay, we don't do that. So we're going to go on. They do have some soft drinks over here with some chips and things of that nature. But this is kind of an overall view of this first part as you're walking in. We have not actually got started in the actual museum part yet. Now, what I like is picture this gentleman sitting beside this actual vehicle that looks like it was taken in the time, early 20s. I've always kind of prided myself on knowing a lot about these older vehicles, but I did not know there was a GMC Sprint. So that's just something that I'll have to admit to you. 
it does look very similar to a um, El Camino. Now we're going to kind of pan around here. This is the actual part of the museum. There's another Phillips 66 sign. I don't know how many of you are familiar with the story behind the Phillips 66 gas stations. Actually, Frank Phillips was the man, the oil baron, that discovered the oil that led to Phillips Petroleum. And they were, him and a co-worker, a, uh, not a co-worker, a uh, business associate, they were driving down and they were trying to think what to call their new found oil company. And they just happened to be on Route 66. So the, his business associate said, well, your last name is Phillips and we're on Route 66, what we call it, Phillips 66. That's a true story. And that's how it became Phillips 66. Now this is a Ford. But look how immaculate, look how beautiful this was made. Of course, there's your crank, how you actually start the vehicle. But look at the gold. I mean, that is just, um, and the white tires, the spokes, that's just, this actually in 1907, so it's a little over 100 years old, 100 and, um, the start of a legacy, 1907 Ford Model R Roadster. Now, if I'm not mistaken, these are oil wick lamps. You see where they would light the wick? That was their headlights. And I believe they had the same thing for their tail lights. But look at the leather upholstering in this. That is just beautiful. And those white spoke wheels are just, that is so cool. Let's go back here though, we'll see there's only one light back here, and of course that would be the stop light. And then there's a, a clear lens over here. But there again, these are oil wick lamps. And see the back end of it? It's kind of got that boat shape to it. I know that's what it is, but it's kind of got that shape to it. And that's rather unique. I didn't know those had that shape, but this is a Ford, 1907 Ford. Now, here's another one. This is just incredible. And I want to kind of give you a pan, panoramic view here of the cars. Oh, wow. I see an old Cadillac over there. There's some old pickups over here. Now, here's a little unique little car filled full of balloons. Now, I have never seen a car like this before. And I don't know this. <laughs> Actually, a real, it might be. It probably is. That's really different. Okay, we need to go over here and I need to show you this. Look at this suitcase back here on the back of this car. Look at that. That is, that is crazy. That's a leather, just a big suitcase. A trunk, rather. A trunk. And then look at the stoplights. They say, oh, sorry about my fingers. Stop. Oh, bright green wheels, look at that, and a white, look at the size of those white wall tires. Look at that hood ornament, it looks like a bird of some sort. And again, this is a Ford. 1931 Ford Model A, the Vicky, leatherback Victoria. And of course, the reason why they call it the leather back is because of the big suitcase, or trunk rather, I guess, and back of the car. That is just, just phenomenal. The way they built these cars back in the day, they took pride in the craftsmanship and the detail of these vehicles. These aren't fi plastic and fiberglass. Oh. We're going to get started and walk on around here. Now this is the cutest little Jeep. Look at this. Look at that. 
This is 1950 Crosley, Farm O Road, Farm probably Farm or Road or. Um, this vehicle was produced 40 years ago, too early, forerunner of the modern day ATV, which everyone from farmers to hunters used and enjoyed. Optional rear seat was available or dump bed or light duty hauling. The car can also be fitted with all weather top. License turn signals made it street legal. Dual wheels can also be added for more traction and heavy duty hauling. Sorry about that, the light. Uh, reflection there but look how simple and the basic this is very basic look at that ashtray chrome ashtray down there and of course your regular typical gauges but this is just really clean and that wooden uh, bench seat back here is really cool I just love this. This would be fun to have if you were, you had your own property and you had to go from location to location. That would be the thing to have, I would think. Now this is another cute little, look at this, they've got the little baby moon hubcaps. Uh, just like this would have the baby moon hubcaps. Um, I tell you what, I've been to a lot of museums, car museums, but this is really, really exceptional. And we're going to show you the inside of it here. And I, to be honest with you, I do not know what this is. I've never seen these cars before in my life. I've been to a lot of car museums in a lot of different places, and some of these I've never seen before. Well, let's see what this is. The Little Giant, 1947 Crosley CC. Pick up. Okay. And there again, we're just going to swing around. Look at the I didn't show you the hood on this thing. Look at the hood. Look, it's just a strap. And that's, of course, where the engine would be. And this, I have, there's not even a any kind of signage on this little vehicle. So I am not sure about this. I don't know if it appears to be. I don't see any signage on this vehicle. If this is some sort of deal where you can win a party pack with gift cards. You have to guess the number of balloons that's in this uh, vehicle. So, you know, I just don't know. This could be an actual working vehicle. Uh, it does have all the, you know, it's got the, oh, it's even got a, look at this, U.S. Virgin Islands license plate. It's a Crosley. So it probably is. It, it's just very unique. I've never seen... A vehicle like that before so you know like I said a lot of these I've not ever seen before but we're gonna just kind of walk over here and we're gonna let you see I'm gonna try to do all of them there's not that many in here we'll just kind of do a walk around look there they got their golf their golf clubs in the back of that one and there again look at the size of those white wall tires look at that chrome that's just breathtaking look at that chrome Look at that. That is beautiful. And look at the the uh, hood ornament here. Look at that hood ornament. They just do not, of course, make vehicles like this anymore. Now here's it looking straight on. Exotic Opulence 1932 gas, or Packard rather, Coupe Roadster. Wow. Packard International. They're on the bumper. Colorado 1932 but look at the size of this vehicle these are not small vehicles but just look at the detail leather I mean that is real leather that's got to be real leather and then here's the inside of it look at that big steering wheel I tell you what this is just beyond I can't even I, these are just so beautiful there was so much detail 
they didn't spare anything. Even these, this must be like a, a place to step up on and see even it's chrome. Of course it's convertible. I mean, this is just so detailed. I mean, and then I got to show you some of these pictures on the wall uh, from back in the day. There's the old gas pumps. High speed gas, it says. And there's some pictures of what it would have looked like back in the day. There's a, an old gas pump. Let's go up here and look at the, um, look at this. 35 cents a gallon. 35 cents a gallon. It's crazy. And these were not gas friendly cars. I guarantee you these were not. Um, but at 32 cents a gallon, you could, or whatever it was, 35 cents a gallon. You could, but back in the day, back, that was a lot of money back then, though. Of course, they didn't make the wages we make today. See the gas station attendant? So back in the day, if they had attendants that would service, they would fill your gas tank, wash off your windows, check your oil, um, all of that. Of course, that's not heard of today. But they did back then. Once you look at the architecture of this building, this would have been, in, of course, a gas station. Paul Hammond Sales and Service. You see the tiled roof. And see, even the building, look how that was. They took so much pride in how they built their buildings and their cars back then. Now, this car is a 1931 Packard convertible coupe. Now, I mean, look at the grill on this. Let me show you a close-up of the grill on that. And these headlights, hey, these headlamps are huge. They're probably twice as large or more than today's. And they're again, look at the size of these tires, these wheels. It's huge. And see the artwork they did on the actual wheel? I mean, there's just no words. I just, and so they got the chrome plated rear view mirrors on the, uh, and not just one spare tire, but two spare tires. And then see the uh, chrome. Just everything is just, it's just incredible. Now here's a covered luggage probably like a big uh, uh, trunk but it's covered now this one I won't be able to walk around that way but I can go back this way and get you a better these are so large I know you can't really tell it but these wheels are huge for being a car It's just a shame of where well, it used to be and where we've came to. Okay, well, we're going to kind of swing around here. Now, here's another Ford. I'm not trying to do these twice. So let's go back over here and we'll see what we got here. Okay, um, 1929 Ford Model A Standard Coupe. So this may have been more priced. Now look at that radiator. Look how that's got the little tube in it. That may have been a way to, for the temperature.
This might have been more the working man's car that I was trying to say earlier. Uh, that's what I take of it. This would have been more. Now, these seats back here, and I know... <laughs> um, these were actually called the mother-in-law seat. But as you can tell, there's only room for two passengers. I mean two passengers, I'm sorry. The driver and a passenger is what I meant to say. And then this seat back here. Now that's what I've always heard it referred to as. That may not be true, but that's what I've always heard it. And that is a Kansas uh, antique license plate on it. A lot of these do have regular uh, license plates on them. Now here's, that's actually Chevrolet. 1930 Chevrolet Universal Series AD sedan. And there again, look at the hood ornament, the radiator. I am assuming that that is a way to check it. That might've been a way to check the temperature. See where you would step up to get into the vehicle and then there's the instant with the wood grain steering wheel and then look at the upholstering i mean these are just really i may have already shown this and the little giant i think i have let's go over and look at this old ford pickup This is a 1950 Ford F1 half-ton pickup. Very nice. Look at that inside that in that in that neat. I got to show you this bed lining wood grain yeah, here we go this actually has Harley Davidson motorcycles emblem on it and there again this looks all original this is actually an international pickup And there again, these are not small vehicles. I know it's kind of hard to tell. But they built these back in the day. Harley Truck, 1940 International, D2 half ton pickup. And kind of just swing around again. Kind of give you an idea of what's in this museum. Now here you go. 1958 Cadillac Custom Roadster. I should be wearing a towel around my neck because I'm just about to drool. <laughs> I mean, here you go. Look at those hubcaps. Oh, no, those are wheels. Look at those wheels. Now I'd look at the look at how they made the doors. Those were actually okay. There weren't any doors. You just kind of climbed into this thing. Now I did not know that. But look at the dash of this thing. Look how roomy and spacious the inside of this is. Can you imagine driving down the road, looking down that hood. No, there's no doors on this. It's convertible, of course. But look at the a postering on this thing it is so cool no you just kind of climbed in and and took up I did not know that I've I really did not know that they did not have actual doors on this year of Cadillac I say I learned something new today here's another view of the dash wow. and here's another Cadillac now this in two-door convertible of course These were absolutely huge. I just.
This is also a 1958 Cadillac. And it's got a 1956 Cadillac, uh, or not Cadillac, I'm sorry, California license plate. Well, now, wait a minute. That's a 1958. This is a 1958 Custom Roadster, and they look very similar, except this has the hood ornament on it. The other one does not. This one has the gold uh, emblem on the front, and that one does not. That's just really different. I've still never less. Oh, now here's another Cadillac. Now, this is a 1952 Cadillac convertible coupe. Now, you know what? As far as I'm concerned, these are the epitome of Cadillacs. You just can't get any better, in my, in my opinion. Look at the upholstering on that. It is absolutely beautiful. I mean, this video really doesn't know justice. Um, it is absolutely... And there's a chrome covered where the spare would go, right there, as you can see. See, they don't... Of course, they, they've stopped doing that a long time ago. I know, but... So beautiful. Now, here you go. I'm getting ready to show you something really special that I've not seen before in any museum. Um, now, this is really super cool. This is actually the presidential limousine. Now let's just take a little look in here, if we can. There's the American flag draped over the back of the seat. Look at that upholstering. And there's a telephone. You see, back in the day, they had telephones. But you had to have, there's the antenna for the, the telephones right there. And it was much like a home phone. Now see, there's a device over there. I'm not sure, that may be a radio. And see, so you got your two bench seats over here, and then you got the full back seat back here. And look how deep that tent is. The front door is not open, so it took, there's too much glare. I can't show you the inside. But this is the presidential limousine from back in the day. Lincoln Continental. Look at that. This thing's a block long. I mean, I'm not lying. You, you just can't imagine. They're again in the video, but this is huge. Let's see if we can read something about this. This is the Lehman Peterson limousine, 1969 limousine, or Lincoln rather, model 90 executive limousine. One of 567 built between 1963 and 1970. George Skip Lehman and Robert Pete Peterson designed and built their first limousine in a small garage in downtown Chicago. It got, it's pretty lengthy, but still nevertheless, this is a so, I've never seen this before, not in any museum, an actual presidential uh, limousine. I mean, this thing is literally a block long. I mean, it's crazy. Okay, I better not go any further back there because the space is very limited. Now, maybe you might be able to get a look at the inside of this. I've got to be really careful not to touch anything. I'm sorry for the glare. Okay, now here you go. Now this has a... That's where the parachute would deploy. This is a dragster. Now look how tiny, look how tiny that is to sit in. Look at the lion on each side. Of course, there's your racing slicks. There's the engine. This is just so cool. Here's the tank. 
look at the uh, <laughs> lamps on the front of this thing. Hot Rod Herman. This is a 1966 Bears Custom Dragula coffin car. This was from the Munsters TV series. Now, I've never seen this either. This is the first. I've seen other cars like it. Oh boy. Oh my goodness. Look at this. This was a Cadillac hearse at one time. Uh, actually, it says Motley Crue on it, so it was probably owned by that band at the time. It's a huge engine in this thing, my goodness. It's very unique. Um, Okay, so we're going to go on. Oh boy. Oh, share, it says. Now, honestly, this looks modified to me. I, I just don't even recognize this. It kind of looks like a Mustang. Okay, this is a 1966 Ferris Custom Ford Mustang convertible. Highly modified, and evidently it was owned by chair look at the there's the inside of the vehicle <laughs> Sunny and shares oh that okay Sunny had one too this was Sunny's look at the inside of his Look at the old 8-track deck down there. Do you see that? That's just really cool. Yep, these were really modified. They do kind of resemble the Mustang a little bit. But I just took a guess earlier, but that's what it is. And then here's one rotating. Just kind of let you look at that car rotate. really cool okay we have some race cars this one's a Chevy Chevy Camaro it's got the flag on top of the racing car and that's what these guys set in that's what race car drivers set in look at all those gauges and and uh, levers, and I don't know. It's, that's crazy. And then, here you go. Here's another one. It's the Ford Taurus. And they're going to look at all the toggle switches and gauges, and... Oh, man. 1999 Ford Taurus NASCAR. And then just kind of back up and let you see that overall. And we're going to kind of take a little sneak peek back here. Now there's another Cadillac setting in there. We cannot go on this part. This is probably the garage where they work on their vehicles. Of course, that's a super sport Camaro over there. Let's, we're going to walk on around here. This is a Formula Indy car, I do believe. Um, Indy car, 1997. Dallara Oldsmobile Indy car. Boy, how do you look at this thing? Look at the engine on that thing. My gosh. That is incredible. I've got to show you something in here in just in a minute. Um, there's the race cars. Bodina Yellow 2006 Ferrari Spider. Wow. 
Very nice, very nice, very nice. I'm going to see if I can show you something here in just a minute. There's the dash. I've got to show you something over here. There again, this is their garage area. But look at this old shell truck sitting back here. There again, sorry about the glare. That's the best I can do at this point. Shell gasoline truck. And then here's a huge bicycle. I mean bicycle, I'm sorry, motorcycle. Look how big that thing is. Huge. And what have we here? Andretti, I cannot pronounce that. It's a Lamborghini, 2014 Lamborghini. I thought it was a Lamborghini. Let's see, they got the specs up here. It just kind of tells all about it. I wouldn't even know how to drive one of these. I mean, this, this thing's crazy. Look at that dash inside compartment. Wow. And this is another Ferrari. Italian Stallion, 2010. Ferrari. Well, quite frankly, I like that body design. Um, I mean, they're both they're both really nice. And then here you go. 2019 Chevrolet Corvette. You know, that's really, really, very, very, very cool, but I still prefer these. I still prefer these. This is a 1963 Chevrolet Corvette. And we'll just let it spin around here for you. And of course, this is 1953 Chevrolet Corvette. Very nice. I'm going to step back here just real quick and let you see the back end of this. And of course, there's that one. I still prefer these. Now this is a Tesla. It's a 2010 Tesla Roadster Sport. Wow, check that out. Oh my gosh. That is so cool. Look how beautiful that car is. I'm just going to kind of pan around here and let you see this is just where I have came from. And we're going to go on around. Now, of course, here's the Back to the Future car. This is a 1981 DeLorean DMC-12. I've seen these all over. These have been, I've seen, a, there was a, there's a movie car museum in Branson, Missouri. But they've got theirs all decked out like in the movie. This is just a straight DeLorean without all the props and everything. This is what it was intended to look like originally without all the movie props in it. This is a very unique car. Um, it's got that stainless steel look to it. And of course it's got the, it's got those crazy doors of course, this car was supposed to be designed to look 
like the future. You know, I, I, I truly believe that's the way they designed it. And that's what made it perfect for the movies, Back to the Future. Now this is a 1975 Bricklin. I have no idea. I've never heard of this car before, ever. Safety Vehicle One, product of New Brunswick, Canada, inspired by futuristic design. Okay. Um, it is very different. Hmm. And then there's the interior. Nice interior. Leather interior. Very nice. Okay, let's go on. I'm going to try to just kind of pan around here and let you see where we're at. Here's an old VW bus. 1963 Volkswagen. Samba bus. Very nice. Look at the rows of seating in this. There's like two rows of seating and then a big back area to haul things. Yep. Very nice. Now here, okay. I think these were called Jeeps, Jeep the Thing, I think. Um, I've seen these before in parades and that sort of thing. This is called the Ridiculous Thing, 1973 Volkswagen. The Thing. I was right. I've, I've seen these in parades. The Shriners use these a lot. And of course, they'll deck them all out with different, um, I don't know what you want to call it, like motif things. But that's what this is. It's called The Thing. Very basic. Very, very simple. But I've seen these things where they jump up and down and they bells whistles, you might say. Now I want you to see, look how tiny. I mean, this car, I've seen, I've seen cars like this before. Matter of fact, we were just at a car museum in a Sepulpa, Oklahoma, that had a car just like this. It's called the bubble car. And of course, the front end of it opens up, and that's how you sit down in the car. There's a steering wheel and all your you know, the pedals and such. But I've never quite seen a car that opened up literally from the front that way. 1957 bubble car. Oh, sorry. I got my finger again. Um, okay. BMW, though, made this. Okay. All right. Yeah, I seen the emblem on there. I knew that was a. Uh, BMW. Actually, I'll tell you a bit of history about the BMW and what that symbol is. BMW started out making airplanes and that symbol, the white part of it is the propeller and the blue is the sky. And that's how they come up with that emblem. That's a true story. Of course, later on they went from making aircraft to making cars. Now, I want you to check this out. This is a Cork Art BMW 1958 vehicle. Now look at this. I have never seen this before. This is literally made out or lined with cork. That's crazy. Huh. I've been to a lot of museums. I've never seen this decked out in cork. And if you can see, it's got, look at that, all different kinds of names brands whatever is on this look how tiny those tires are these two vehicles are identical other than you know that just has a rugged pick job this has cork this actually has a license plate on it minnesota collector <laughs> very very cool and there again it's just very basic open up the front of it and Climb in, close it up, and go down the road. 
Very unique. I don't think I've ever seen that before. I mean, other than the museums. Okay, what we've got over here? Brimming with Beauty, 1941 Packard 110 Deluxe Touring Sedan. Look at that. That is just, I don't know. Just, that's just crazy. Look at that. There again, it's got the same hood ornament. Look at those big tires. I know this video is a bit longer than I normally make, but I've just got to show you these. This is a Ford Edsel. I'll tell you a little bit of history about this Edsel, or the Edsel vehicle. Uh, Edsel Ford was a son of, of course, Henry Ford, and he designed this car. And he named it after himself, Edsel. His name was Edsel Ford. And it was so ugly, it was, was pretty in a way. I mean, you know, it's just very unique. Um, this particular model always, of course, is convertible, but look, there again, these are huge vehicles. They're all original. And here's the inside of the upholstering, the dash. Look at that dash. It is just beautiful. And we're just gonna kind of give you they're gonna sweep of the museum. There's the Cadillacs. There's President Chilemo. And there's the car from the Munsters. From Motley Crue, Sunny Shares cars. Here's one over here. This is a Chrysler Imperial. And these were truly, I'm not lying. If you thought that Cadillac over was long. This car is huge. 1962 Imperial Crown Convertible. I guarantee you one thing. In our parking lot we got today, you'd need two or three parking spots. Look at this thing. It's huge. And I love those wheels and those tires. I'm gonna to try to show the inside. That's the end, that's the. Okay, this is just really, really cool. Let me go back here to the back. We'll show you the back of it here just real quick. Okay, there we go. I gotta stand way back here just to get it all in. And that's, uh... oh, I tell you what, a lot of vehicles. Now this is a custom line. This is a Ford. Nineteen fifty-four Ford Custom two-door sedan. And this is also very, very nice. It's kind of up on a little platform, so I won't be able to. I'll try to get up there a little bit so I can show you the inside of it, the dash. And everything is really nice. And this is a Buick Special sitting over here. This is a 1955 Buick Special. It says a car for everyone. 1955 Buick Special. And here's the interior. Look at the interior of that. Absolutely beautiful. Now here we go, here's a clipper. Let me get back here so I can show you the whole vehicle. This is 1955 Packard Clipper. And I mean, this is just really beautiful car. Let me see if I can show you the um, interior there. It's got the clipper, I'm sorry, clipper uh, logo on the inside the design and then here's the back end of it 
Now see if we can go back here. Yep. Super, super cool. Now here, here you go. Bel Air Chevy. I had a friend of mine in high school that owned one of these. I used to drag main. Of course, it wasn't this nice. Um, but nevertheless, though, yep, this 1957. Um, Chevrolet Bel Air four door hardtop. Now, what that means is, is it's like a convertible. I mean, all the windows roll all the way down. But instead of being a soft top where it folds up, it's just a hard top. And look, they even have the Chevrolet emblem on the uh, seats. That's a custom steering wheel. That's a custom shifter, of course. And those are the custom wheels. And then here we got a Ford GT over here. We got some Fords. That's a Mach 1. And then here's a 1960. Five Chevrolet Malibu. And here's a 1958 Chevy Apache. I always like these Chevy Apaches. They were just a really, really look like a really heavy duty type of a truck. And of course, this has the look at that lining of the bed lining is really different. Now, there's the inside of it. It's been customized a little bit. And there's the bed. That's really cool. I like that. There's the back end of the Chevrolet Malibu over there. And here's a GMC. The big block. GMC Spirit. Oh, I'm sorry, Sprint. GMC Sprint. This is 1971 GMC Sprint. And there again, it's it's a just a beautiful vehicle, really nice. Let me see if I can get back here a little bit, uh, so I can show you the whole vehicle. Yeah, these are really nice. Yep, that's it. That's like the one out on the front as well. Now here you go. This is a 1979 Pontiac Trans Am. This was the same car Smoking the Bandit used. Still got the gold eagle emblem. I thought that was so cool. These are truly, truly a classic. They really are. They just, look at the upholstering, look at the dash on that. See the CB radio in there? That Smoking the Bandit was kind of centered around CB radios. It was all the rage at that time. Matter of fact, when CB radios first come out, you had to have a license by the FCC to operate one. And when the whole CB explosion happened, the FCC said, forget that, because there was hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people applying for a license. So they just kind of threw their hands up in the air and said, you know what? We're not going to have these licenses anymore. And that's a true story. I had a CB. I had several CBs over the years. And it used to be real fun to talk on them. This is 1970 Plymouth Superbird. Uh, there again, this is just phenomenal. Look at this car. And it's got the big racing uh, spoiler. Had to stop to think for a minute. Racing spoiler on the back end. It's hard to believe these things were street legal because. I know these things can get up and run. But that's what this is. Roadrunner. Plymouth. Yep. Really, really, really nice. Oh, I'd love to have that. I'd love to have all these, actually. Okay, here's a Prowler. I remember when these come out. 1999. Plymouth Prowler. And I don't think they make these anymore. Um, only made them for a few years. But they're just really meant for a play toy. There's nowhere to really put anything or, you know, I don't think you could actually use these for traveling. But nevertheless, 
that are still very, very sporty. I know this video's went over much longer than what I normally do, but there's just, I wanted to show you these vehicles. I think I'm just about done. I appreciate you watching my videos. And if you would like and subscribe and share, I would be really grateful. Um, I think there's only one I have not showed you, and I think I'm just about done. Here's this one over here. This little coupe. Oh, I say little. <laughs> but, yeah. I love that paint job and the wheels on this thing. It's really nice. Let me swing around here. This is a Willys Pro Street Coupe, 1941 Willys America Car. America Car. That's what that is. And then, of course, here you have Volkswagen Beetle, 1957. Actually, that's what Volkswagen means, is people car. German for people's car. I know for years and years and years, these did not change. And they finally started... Um, changing the looks of them quite a bit over the years but they're again just very basic interior dash it's got a fold away top that's kind of cool okay guys i think we're going to call this good there again this is in manhattan kansas uh, 3007 anderson avenue it's like eight bucks a piece to get in very nice if you love cars this is a place to go I heard about this on Facebook. They actually opened back in April, and we're just now making our way here today. But it's been worth the trip. I just love things like this. But at any rate, I think with that, I'm gonna say goodbye for now. Hope you all enjoyed this video, and I will see you on my next adventure. Y'all take care, have a nice weekend.